and welcome to game number six of the 53rd annual Bloomfield Christmas Tournament between the Bloomfield Wildcats, the sixth seed, and the 11th seed, East Prairie Eagles. I'm Tyler Wagner. And I'm Ed Gargas. Once again, we're doing double duty today so far. Did one uh, earlier, uh, we uh, Porchville Greenville. So uh, we're back with you for this game between East Prairie and Bloomfield. Had some exciting games. Finally, uh, we get to the afternoon now. Had a close one with Malden and Richland and well that was yeah. a great game sure was. It really came out and that, that very well a great beat. game on both ends of the court had a little trouble putting the ball away getting it to fall in the hole but uh the defense really played an outstanding game against Richland sure that very well may be the game of the day right there that that uh 4 13 matchup now we're looking at a 6 11 matchup and uh we haven't seen East Prairie this year haven't heard a whole lot about them which they're over there in Mississippi County it's hard to it's hard to get a lot of uh you know, thoughts on them being all the way over there, but we've seen, I've seen Bloomfield a few times this year. They're bringing back a strong, strong club after winning their district championship last year in class three. Yes. Got a strong team coming back. So I think we're geared up for a pretty good game here. Yeah, I think uh, Oost Prairie got off to a pretty good start in the Bernie Invitational, and I think they uh, maybe fell in the consolation game there or won that, but uh, they've lost four straight since then. So they're not coming into the tournament on, on a little – confidence boost that they'd like to be but uh as you said the wildcats they returned four starters off that uh team that all district champion team last year so uh looking good looking good east prairie coming in two and five and let's see what is what what a bernie this year do we have that record uh, four and two with a quality win over a twin rivers team both their losses are against uh teams seated higher here in this tournament in uh bernie and then also Richland. Richland, yeah. So, so they, uh, they played some tough games already. So uh, they got a lot of confidence built up so far, beating some very good teams, especially in that Bernie Invitational Tournament they had early on. And, you know, I think we're geared up to a good team. Probably a lot of unfamiliarity between these two teams. You don't see East Prairie and Bloomfield match up every year, unless it's basically in the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament. Right. So a lot of unfamiliarity on the floor with each other. But I think we're, uh, we're geared up for a good showdown here for our game number six. Game number six of the 53rd annual Bloomfield Christmas Tournament. Six seed Bloomfield Wildcats against 11 seeded East Prairie Eagles. The East Prairie Eagles are coached by Casey Knight and assisted by Eric Voorhees. Casey Knight, a former coach of Richland. He's been all around the area pretty much. He's been up at Cape Central and also in New Madrid County Central. Recently in Richland, He's, this, is, this is his first year at East Prairie and also the Bluefield Wildcats are coached by Dustin Hicks and assisted by Jason Carnes. And sure enough, I'm, I went to college with all three of those guys, <laughs> Casey Knight, uh, Dustin School, or Dustin Hicks, and Jason Carnes in college anyway. So a uh, very, very young group we have here of coaches. So, so far today, uh, those of you who've been able to turn tune in all day, uh, everything's going as per the seeding with the higher seed getting getting the win. Again, we said there was a very exciting game in the uh, Malden and uh, Richland game. I guess it would be the Richland-Malden. But, uh, you know, going into, what was it, tie going into the fourth quarter? Yeah. And, uh, several lead changes up to that point. And then finally in the last two, three minutes, Richland with about a 10-point victory today. But uh, it, it was a hard-fought uh, well played game by the by the ball and green wave sure yeah very tough game and look for, look out for richland making waves in that championship bracket and also balded in the consolation yeah they've got a tough team to where they can be very competitive in that consolation bracket it showed a lot of athleticism sure and the start lineup for the east prairie eagles number two 510 junior mikey russell Number 12, a six-foot senior, Caleb Wilford. Number 20, a 5'10 sophomore, Andrew Cartwright. Dalton Golightly. Number 22, a 5'10 sophomore, Dak Dalton Golightly. 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 All right, Golightly. How about that? And number 23, a 6'5 junior, Connor Scott. And for the Bloomfield Wildcats, the host. It's Jacob McNeil, 5'10 senior. Number 22, Garrett Rice, 6'0 senior. 
Number 24, Seth Hill, the six foot junior. Number 30, six foot one senior, Derek Caldwell. And number 43, six foot four senior, Cody Redcloud. And there's your starting lineups. And this game six brought to you by Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey of Bolden, New Wave Communications, and Shelter Insurance. Your local agent, Brock Williams. And we got to talk to Brock in the uh, halftime of last game. Great guy. He supports basically all athletics in Southeast Missouri, especially Bloomfield, Dexter, Puck Skills, the areas he serves. Sure glad to have him on for this tournament. And East Prairie will control the tip. And that's blocked away by Seth Hill. Bloomfield showing a good defensive series here early on. The number 30. Derek Caldwell with strong move inside. Put back there by number 43, Cody Recloud. Nice the defense there, there, taken away. But number 24, but couldn't put it away. That was Seth Hill on the defense there. Just couldn't get the ball to fall. Well, Bloomfield's really bringing the defensive pressure early on. Shot there by number 23, that being uh, Connor Scott. Nice bucket there by number 11, Jacob McNeil. Burning the 2-2-1 press. Connor Scott with the ball. The drive, can't get it to fall. Good offensive boards there by the East Prairie Eagles. And East Prairie getting about three offensive rebounds on that series, able to get some second opportunities, and we're going to go to the line. That'll be Connor Scott going to the line. Connor's got some pretty good size, six foot five as a junior. He's got to be big for these Prairie Eagles, I'm sure, this year with his size alone. Absolutely. Definitely six five in high school. You're going to be very well off compared <laughs> to most teams in southeast Missouri. Scott misses the first one. Good on the second. So four to one with 6.28 to go in the, here in the game six, the 53rd annual Bluefield Christmas tournament. Strong move there by number 30, Derek Caldwell. He'll go to the line for the traditional three. Well, I tell you, being a Bloomfield Wildcat coming into this thing, you've just got to have just a little bit more energy than the other player, other teams because you're the host. It's Absolutely. your tournament. Everybody's coming to your gym. It's got to give you a lot of confidence to come in this gym every year to play in this tournament. Mikey Russell called for the travel. East Prairie with the trap. Able to get the ball back out to over. Scott, or Scott polices up the rebound. A lot of pressure out front by the Wildcats. Well, I'll tell you, that's where you want to play your hard defenses, out front, that far away from the basket towards half court because that gives you the best opportunity to get a steal and a breakaway. So Bloomfield Wildcats doing a great job early on keeping the pressure out front. Inbound goes to Scott in the corner. And the bucket falls for 22. That being Dalton Golightly, 5'11 sophomore.
Ball knocked away. Cartrat with the ball up the right side. Scott looks down underneath, taken away. It's number 22 on the steal, Garrett Rice. In the drive. And a uh, layup a and the foul. Foul goes on Connor Scott. That'll be his first. And a nice finish. So Garrett Rice will go to the line for the and one. Leighton Hensley checking into the game for the Wildcats. And we have a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it right here. And uh, early on here in the first quarter with 4.47 to go, we have the Bloomfield Wildcats, the sixth seed on top of the East Prairie Eagles, the 11th seed, 9-3. to three. And we have an email that came in last game. Sorry we didn't get this in. Uh, we have one from, uh, let's see here. It says, you all are doing great. We have a big screen at the Crowley's Ridge Recreation Center in Bloomfield and are really enjoying the games. And also John Brockmeyer says, hang in there, Puxico, for the later <laughs> games. And the Puxico Indians fell to the Kennedy Indians, Kennedy Indians earlier. And that uh, what was that 3-14 matchup there. Puxico Indians, the 14th seed. So they're going to move on to the consolation bracket. So good luck to those Indians going forward. Thank you all for the emails and keep them coming. All you have to do is email them to sports at yhctv.com sports at yctv.com all it takes is a few clicks send us a comment and we'll put them right here on the air we've had about 11 or 12 so far today a lot of people tuning in and getting their comments wishing their teams good luck in this year's tournament so that's what we'd like to hear send them to us sports at yctv.com Bryce misses the end one Mikey Russell bringing the ball up for the Eagles Defense by Rice. Three-pointer no good. Andrew Cartwright with the shot. Ball will stay with the Eagles on the, on the baseline. East Prairie having a hard time finding an offensive scheme that they're really comfortable in here early on against this zone. And, and the bank shot. Nice shot there. Chris Martin. Chris Martin for two. I think I heard him call glass. I, I, that's, that's the best time to call it is afterwards. <laughs> it always counts then. And we got Connor Dylan Bader in for the Wildcats as uh, Jacob Con McNeil will take a seat. Yeah, Connor Scott's back in for the Eagles. Shot up and in from Rocky Russell. Nice shot there by Russell. The Eagles starting to get into the game now, getting rhythm on offense. Score now 9-7, just under four minutes to go in the quarter. Number 30 with strong move. Derek Caldwell. And Caldwell moved the shoulder in a little bit, tried to get more space. He's going to be called for the offensive foul. You know, it's a lot easier to get away with that when you're a little smaller guy, you know. But a big guy <laughs> like that, you move you move guys a little easier that way. Caldwell will take a seat, and we've got Jordan Sperino in, six-foot senior for the Wildcats. Leighton Hensley, Leighton Hensley, Hensley it with down. a jam. I'm sure that's what the Bluefield faithful have been waiting for, Leighton Hensley to get some space, and he sure did. He's a leaper. He sure is. Standing at 6'2", but it doesn't matter his height. I tell you, he's going to get up there with the best of them. Bader with the move and the foot. Nice strong move by the junior. Bader. Ben Hall with the drive and the layup. 
Nice there, two there by Hall, the senior. Oh, got him on a double dribble there. That's yeah. always a tough one. You don't know when you catch a pass and drop it. You don't know if uh, right. the ref's going to consider that a dribble or just a, a fumble. But that time they considered it a dribble, and he tried to put it on the floor, and they called him for it. It's always a tough one. It's iffy. Yeah. You can tell we're here with the hometown crowd. Noise picking up just a bit here in the gym. They're seeing their Wildcats off to an early lead. 13-9 here with 2.54 to go in the first quarter. Dalton go lightly. Gets it over to Hall. Hall drive the baseline out to Russell from the three-point line. Go lightly with the rebound. Setting it back up. He's picked by Leighton Hensley, who goes up again. Another nice jam there by Leighton. Two hands this goes time. Goes the two hand this time. Never know what we'll see next time, but a nice <laughs> Defensive play to start that off. He picked he picked the, the East Prairie Eagle off perfectly to get a wide open shot. Looks like it might be a foul called on Seth Hill there, a little over aggressive on the defense. Seen quite a few dunks here today. That's that's <laughs> unusual. It's the third, I believe. Sure. We had one in the uh, Kennett game, in. I believe. Kennett game. I missed that one. I apologize. I'll tell you, this TV just brings it out of them. They're one of Put on a good show for us. <laughs> Had one the Dexter Van Buren game. Alan Flanagan put one down. Late now, Leighton Hensley's putting some down. And we're at a timeout here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or allthetrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sandage. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. And welcome back. We're here two minutes and five seconds left in the first quarter of game six between the Bloomfield Wildcats, the sixth seed, and the East Prairie Eagles, the 11th seed. 15 to nine early on in the first quarter, or late in the first quarter, rather. Bloomfield's going to end the inbound. Bring it up against, uh, looks like about a three-quarter court press here by the East Prairie Eagles. Baden, Bader weak side, nice layup. That was a dangerous pass, but he got it up just enough over the defender to find Bader under the goal. Shot short by Scott. Connor Rebound Scott. Rice. Nice Lane move there Hensley. by Hensley. He's coming on strong. He's got six in the quarter. Pass is not deflected, so it's going to go out of bounds to the Wildcats. We've got a substitution in for the Wildcats. We have Matt Merrick, 6'3", or actually a 6'5", junior, number 32 in for the Wildcats. Seth Hill will take a breather. Nice movement down to Hensley again. Nice ball movement there. Got the pass from Jordan Sprino for the Wildcats. Bluefield's moving the ball very well in this first quarter. Ball taken away. And the shot up no good by Merrick. Ben Hall's pushing the ball up the court. Taken away by Hensley. A lot up and down here in this first quarter. Down to 20 seconds to go here in the first. 
See if Bloomfield will take the last shot. Looks like they're going. Wow. Alley and an alley -oop pass to Leighton Hensley. Probably intended to be a dump, but it worked just as well. And a foul out front. Looks like that's going to be on Leighton Hensley, it looks like. His first. Nice play, will it go? That was a nice pass. And Leighton Hensley, great adjustment to basically reverse that for a layup. And that'll end the quarter. At the end of one, it's the Bloomfield Wildcats on top of the East Prairie Eagles, 23 to nine after the first. We'll be back with your second right here in just a minute. Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Seek shelter today. And welcome back. We're about to get set for your second quarter. 23 to nine in this game six after one quarter between Bloomfield and East Prairie. The host, Wildcats, off to a great start. Anytime you can break 20 points in a quarter, you know you're doing some many things very well, and I think it's starting on the defensive end. What about you, Ed? I was getting ready to say the same thing. They're very aggressive on the defensive end. They've been pushing the ball or pushing the defense to full court, but uh, the quick hands of Leighton Hensley just up front and also with, uh, with uh, Seth Hill. Uh, just just the, a lot the shorter lineup from the Eagles just having a little bit of trouble. Sure, out and the pressure's coming from the backcourt. The guards are really getting after it. East Prairie's having a hard time handling the pressure early on, but see if they can make some adjustments, get back in this game for the second quarter. In, in for the Eagles is going to be Caleb Williford, 6'1 senior. Has a little bit of size there in the middle. It's going to allow Connor Scott to be out on the wing. See what the call is. Call is on number 23, Connor Scott, his second. He's going to have to really be careful there in this first half. He's one of their, he's their, uh, he's definitely their inside guy standing at 6'5". You definitely want to lose a guy like this early on, the foul trouble. So that's going to send, who do we have the line here? Okay, uh, number 33, Debbie Bader. Dylan Bader. Shot up good for Bader. 6'3", Junior showing good form there at the line. Gets a lot of rotation on the ball. And the roll. Was that a three-point attempt? Apparently so. Apparently so, because he's getting a third attempt down in the quarter. Couldn't hardly tell. <laughs> And the third good for Bader. He hits all three. So far this game, Dylan Bader's matched up very well against Connor Scott. He's given up a couple of inches, but he may have a few pounds on him and they will hold his own very well. Shot up, no good, rebounded. Rebound McNeil. McNeil. Seth Hill with a three-pointer. Rebound there by Derek Caldwell in the putback. What's well, a strong rebound and a strong putback. Very impressive by Caldwell. Ben Hall for the Eagles brings it up. Looking for Scott yeah. underneath. Nice little hook there. He's fouled on the play. He's drawn a lot of attention down there when he gets the ball, and so should. He's, he's definitely their inside threat. Made a nice move there. Didn't quite get it to go, but he's going to get a chance for two. First up, good. Foul is on Dylan Bader, his first. Second up, good for Scott. 
He's got three in the game. Couple of substitutions in. Mikey Russell back in for the Eagles. I don't think I caught in who cut. Uh, I think Kevin it was uh, 22. Garrett Rice in for Bader. Okay. Leighton Hensley with a shot. McNeil with a good rebound. Kicks it back out to Hill. Excuse me, Rice. And the Eagles take it away. Dalton Golightly bringing the ball up for the Eagles. Connor Scott on Give the back door. There. Didn't quite get it to go. Leighton Hensley on the back on the baseline. He slings out to McNeil. And a travel called on Rice. Yeah, Rice. On the three. I tell you, these Bloomfield Wildcats have come out as hot as any team this early in the game. Well, we've seen the, some pretty high scores, but uh, like I said, well, they had 23 points in the first quarter. They just came out as on fire. Sure, I think Bloomfield's come out probably the quickest out of the gate as we've seen all day. They do have a little advantage in the shooting on their own court, but uh, their intensity, you know, some of the other teams, they've had a lot of intensity getting it up and down the court, but they just haven't got the rock to fall. But it's not been a problem for Bloomfield yet today. Sure. And the foul is on Leighton Hensley. That'll be his second. Scott with the three, just short. Good hustle by the Eagles. Mikey Russell. Blocked there by number 30, Derek Caldwell. Big guy showing his athleticism. And the Bloomfield Wildcats turn it back over. Definitely a good block there by Caldwell. He stood his ground, waited for the uh, defender to go up. Nice block away. Oh, got turned around there. Carter turns it back over to the, to the Wildcats. Looks like Ben Hall is going to come back in for the Eagles. Just under six minutes, actually five and a half minutes to go in this second quarter. Wildcats on top by 17. McNeil with a three. Big shot by McNeil. That's five in the game. Well, I'll tell you, speaking of Bloomfield, their season last year, they didn't compete as good as I think they could have last year in the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament, but they peaked at the perfect time last year. There's a drive and a score by, uh, that's uh, go lightly. And I tell you, they peaked at the perfect time. Towards the end of the year, they won or uh, competed in the championship of that Stoddard County Conference Tournament and also won their district championship and moved on to the state tournament. A very good year for the Wildcats last year. Shot by Hall and rebound by uh, Cody Redcloud. Down low to Caldwell and good. And it looks like uh, just a substitution timeout. Yeah, it looks like Russell may have caught an elbow or something. Coach oh, Knight really? taking a look at it. Oh, okay, I didn't see that there. Looks like it's either in the eye or right above it. And a foul out front, charge to Garrett Rice for the Wildcats. Looks like he got his feet up underneath the off offender, that, or the offense just a little bit. You can call the defense the defender, but you hate to call the offense an offender. The offender. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought of it that way, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> and uh, it's Cartwright at the line. He sinks it. Let's 
Second shot up, good for Cartwright. He's got two in the game now. Bader with a cross court pass. Oh, what a pass! Yeah. Great pass there. And that was uh, who did that with that with the bucket? Uh, Bader with the bucket. Bader that was with a the pass bucket. from Seth Hill. Bader went cross court to Seth, and Seth came right back cross court to to Dylan. And Dylan with the layup. It was a great pass. He didn't put too much on it. He knew the he knew the offender. <laughs> <laughs> he knew the offender was coming to the basket, and laid it right there. So he was right there at the basket to lay it in. Kind of a frustration pass there. Good Been offensive home. boards by yep. the Wildcats. Just can't put it away. Ball turned over. It's going to be pushed ahead by the Wildcats. Nice put away there by Dylan Colton Bader. Bader again with the score. He's got 11 in the game, Bader. Connor Scott yeah. with a big basket and the foul. Foul going to be on Red Cloud. Be his first. Oh, Connor Scott showing quite a bit of talent. He's bringing the ball up sometimes against the press, and he's working down low, getting some baskets. He's got quite a repertoire of moves, does Connor Scott. Free throw missed by Scott. Rebounded by Mitchell Skaggs. Out to McNeil. And he'll get it over to Rice. Rice will set up the offense. McNeil down low to Ricotti Red Cloud. He was able to put it away. Now at two and a half minutes left in the half. It's Bloomfield on top, 39-17. They're staying after it, special on defense, another takeaway. Nice play there by Rice. Boy, Bloomfield's really turning up the defensive pressure, especially in the backcourt. The guard's playing great, putting a lot of pressure on the ball, getting into the passing lanes you saw there. Very good defense by the Wildcats this first half. Looks like Dylan Bader going to be called with the foul, his second. As we'll have Chris Martin on the line as – they are now in the one-on-one -on -one situation. First one's good. And the second one. Free score to 41-19. You see displayed there on the bottom of your TV screen. Back out to McNeil. Down low to Red Cloud. Good rebound there and put back. But Mitchell Skaggs doesn't go, but he's fouled. Yeah, big rebound by Skaggs getting the position. So. so while we got a slight break in the action here, just like to say, hey, thanks to Eric Bowles, tournament director, and his entire staff here at Bernie, or excuse me, Bloomfield High School. Just a great tournament started off here in the first half or the first day of the tournament. So I want to commend them. They got, the facilities look great. Got a new paint job and everything over the off season. And so uh, doing a wonderful job. Sure does. A lot of credit goes to Eric Bowles, the principal here, and also the tournament director. Him and his staff do a great job year in and year out. And we got, a new, we got a, another email, one from our good friend Jennifer Hartline from Bloomfield. It says, great job on the Bloomfield Christmas tournament. I'm able to be at home to celebrate my nephew, Matthew Van Dieven's first birthday and still watch the game. That's from Jennifer Hartline, and happy birthday to Matthew. And what a treat to have your birthday right, oh, you know, back-to-back -back with Christmas. You get to double up on the presents <laughs> and uh, as well get to enjoy the, the Bluefoot Christmas tournament. So Absolutely. 
And that's a happy first to Matthew Van Dieven. Happy birthday. And also thank you, Jennifer Hartline, our good friend down at Boot Hill Counseling Services. She's in the news every, every so often with Boot Hill Counseling Services. And a good friend of YHC's, old Jennifer. And keep the emails coming. All you have to do is send them to sports at yhctv.com. Gas connects on the first. So Matt Merrick back in the ball game for the Wildcats, number 32, 6'5", junior. Tough defense by the Wildcats, still applying a lot of pressure. Connor Scott takes the baseline. It's got to be fouled, it looks like, on uh, 43, Cody Red Cloud. It's a nice move there by Connor. He saw the baseline and spun, took that baseline. Very nice move. He's going to get himself back to the line. Gets Up the roll on the first. Red Cloud will take a seat as uh, Jordan Sperino comes back in for the, Bear, the Wildcats. Also, Dalton go lightly for the Eagles back in. Shot up no good by Scott. Rice will bring the ball up. Scott with a rebound, pushes it up. Nice movement, a little too far. Out of bounds over to the Wildcats. Nice ball movement on that. I don't think the ball touched the floor off of that rebound. Nice look better by the Eagles, just a little ahead of old Martin, Chris Martin. We're now at a minute left in the half. Wildcats still at a big lead. Nice move there by Merrick. Had the big guy sitting out there around the three-point line and puts the ball in the court. Splits the defense. Gets a nice jumper. Hands there by Merrick. Connor Scott drives the baseline. Fouled again. This time by uh, number 50, Matt Mitchell Skagg. Scott staying aggressive, and he really needs to because... Well, I tell you, he can really get, get himself to the line a lot. He's got a lot of length, and probably East Prairie's biggest threat down low. Shut up, First good. good. And the second good. He's got eight in the game. We're now at 25 seconds left. See if Bloomfield's going to pull it out. East Prairie's going to try to apply some pressure. Looks like Wildcats are going to play for a final shot. Up by 22. Ball out to Merrick. Back to Rice. He drives, goes up with the left hand. And that brings it in to the first half of game six between Bloomfield and East Prairie. Halftime score, 44 to Bloomfield, East Prairie 22. That's your first half. Stick around. We'll have some halftime stats and discussion in just a few moments. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. 
I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. And welcome to halftime here of game number six, Bloomfield versus East Prairie. Bloomfield on top at halftime, 44 to 22. We'll shoot you some halftime stats real quick. For the leading team, Bloomfield, leading scorer is Dylan Bader with 11, and Leighton Hensley with 10, J uh, Jacob McNeil with five. We've got Derek Caldwell with nine, Cody Rickloud with four, Garrett, Garrett Rice also with four. And we've got Matt Merrick with two. And Jordan Sperino with one. Now for the Eagles of East Prairie, we've got leading scorer Connor Scott with eight. Followed by Chris Martin with four. Dalton Golightly with four. And with two, Ben Hall, Mikey Russell, and Andrew Cartwright. There's your halftime statistics uh, scoring-wise for this game. What did you think of the first half, Ed? Uh, very exciting half by the Bloomfield Wildcats. Not, that's not saying anything against the East Prairie Eagles. They came out with some enthusiasm and all as well, but just the intensity, both ends of the court by the Wildcats. And when Leighton Hensley gets in the game within his first few seconds, yep. throws one down, one-handed, comes right back the very next possession, throws one down, two hands. You know, that's just going to bring the intensity level and the excitement up. Really got the hometown crowd into the game. Not that they needed any other motivation, but uh, just a lot of excitement there by Le Leighton Hensley. So, sure, uh, Leighton Hensley getting two breakaway dunks, getting his home gym fired up, and also getting the teammates around him fired up. And that's translating to a lot of points for the Bloomfield Wildcats, getting turnovers on defense, causing a lot of turnovers. They're applying a lot of pressure out front. Against those East Prairie guards, getting some turnovers going the other way. And just a very exciting first half for this host, Bloomfield. Yes, it looks like the Eagles are trying to get the ball down low to Connor Scott. Uh, Bloomfield are ready for that. You know, they've got their big guys down there with him, and they're waiting on him to try to get the ball. They've just been a good job of applying the pressure once he has the ball, not giving him a lot of freedom of movement. And he's having difficulty getting the ball to go in the hole there. So, uh, 
you know, just a well played half by, by the host team in the Bloomfield Wildcats. Sure, you think of uh, Leighton Hensley coming off the bench, providing a big boost with 10 and a half, and on the other side, it's Connor Scott. He's getting to the line. He's been to the line three times, or four times, that is, and uh, he's got eight points at the half. He's been doing some good things for the East Prairie, especially down low. You know, the Eagles are going to keep them in mind, keep him in mind for their offensive scheme. But uh, I think, you know, for East Prairie to be more competitive in this game and also throughout the tournament, their guard is going to come on, protect the ball a little bit more and be a lot more aggressive and get the ball into the front court. They're, they're playing a lot of their offense out here, out here towards the center line. And, you know, that's, yes. that's not a recipe for, a recipe for success for any team. No, no, it's not. No. So Casey Knight, he, he, he's been around a while. Around in this area, not, he's not new to this tournament by any means, you know, and also playing in the Stoddard County Athletic Association turn or conference. So he he's going to know what kind of adjustments needs to have to make. Let's just see if his uh, guys are able to come out and respond and act accordingly. Sure. Stuff, so. Hey, uh, but while while we got his quick second, just want to remind everybody you can get an up to date bracket look uh, on the internet. Go to www.bloomfieldhighschool. And I apologize, I'm not sure if it's .com and then go to the blog spot or if you got to go bloomfieldhighschool.blogspot.com. It'll be .blogspot. Okay, so, uh, but they've got an up-to-date tournament br or bracket. So uh, if you need to see what's going on, haven't had to miss a game or two, there you go on the Internet. You can get up-to-date right then. Sure, go to bloomfieldhighschool.blogspot.com. We'll try to do our best to keep you updated on the games that have happened throughout the day. I'm sure we've probably done it here. Greg Schwartz, our director for this game probably uh, shot you some scores from the previous games. We'll do our best throughout the tournament to bring you those results, but we don't have the, uh, a page to show you the full bracket, so you can go to the website for that. Uh, stay tuned here for all the scores for this year's tournament. We'll get, get them to you as best as we can. And uh, before we come back to the second half, be sure to email us out there for all of your thoughts, comments about the tournament so far, and also the games coming up. to sports at yctv.com sports at whitectv.com send them to us we'll put your comments right here on the air it's been great so far keep them coming and we're going to take a quick break here we'll be back with your second half in just a few minutes And welcome back. We're about to get set here for the second half of game six, Bloomfield versus East Prairie. And a lot of good games so far. We really had a dandy in Richland and Malden earlier on. A really good game. That was the four seed Richland versus 13th Malden. And I'll tell you, that could have been an upset if Malden would have put some plays together towards the end of that game. That could have been our first upset of the tournament. But so far in this tournament, no upsets yet. As a, we also, yet, you gotta be, <laughs> be sure to emphasize that. So that's always a, you know, a deal, and especially in the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament. Still have two and a half games to go. Yeah, our good friend Sam Cowan of Bernie just passed us. He's an avid YHC viewer. Loves that high school basketball, I tell you. And so do we. That's why we're here. Ball out on a, look like a, off the hands of Dalton go lightly, so the Bear, or Wildcats will bring the ball up. Leighton Hensley takes the ball out, be passing in to Garrett Rice. McNeil with the ball back out to Rice. Down low to Seth Hill. Hill with the three. We got 
trying to push in the back. It looks like on a Wildcat. But Coach Hicks wants to come out and run his offense. Much a little more controlled offense, get some ball movement going. Sure. That foul is on Leighton Hensley. That's his third. So he picked up a quick one here in the third quarter. Connor, Connor Scott, the hard for the basket, fouled. Foul going to be on Seth Hill, I believe, as he got him from behind. That set seal, third foul as well. So uh, two starters now and three fouls. Shot up, good by Connor. Connor Scott up and good again. He's got 10 in the game, very, been very good at the line. He's, uh, let's see, eight of nine from the line so far. Hensley with the shot. Nice two there by Hensley and a good look. Didn't get who, uh, who the pass was on that, but a very good look by that Wildcat. Rebound Seth Hill. Hensley alone. Oh, yeah. One too many Hensley steps this time. Some space again. He yes. didn't quite get his dribble. <laughs> he really wanted that dunk and took just an extra step to get his feet under him. Turns it over the Eagles. Ball taken Press away by Leighton. Here's Hensley. And another two-handed jam by Leighton Hensley. That's his third dunk of the game. Nice little drop step jam there by Leighton. Great athleticism by Leighton. Turned over by the Eagles. Looks like we're going to get a quick timeout. Casey Knight wants to talk it over with his Eagles. We'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Had a little mix up there from the director. We'll forgive him. <laughs> I think he was bent over tying his shoelace. Sure. Oh, wait. Flip flops <laughs> don't have shoelaces. In this game, as Greg showed you, it's brought to you by Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey of Malden, New Wave Communications, and Shelter Insurance from your local agent, Brock Williams. Down low to Hensley again. Good ball movement there. I think that was three passes before it wound up in Hensley's hands. Sure, moving the ball well to get those passing lanes, especially there under the goal. Very well by the Wildcats. And it's taken away Hensley. back to Hensley. And another throw down by Hensley. That'll be his fourth of the game. He's got uh, 18 in the game. Andrew Cartwright just couldn't quite get a handle on the ball to make the pass. Drug that foot just a little bit, but it only takes a little bit for it to be a foul. It sure does, especially when you're right in front of a referee. It's almost not fair when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hensley at the high post. Takes out, it out to McNeil. To McNeil with the three. Big three by McNeil. Jacob McNeil, his first of the half. First points. He's got eight in the game. Scott on the drive. Out of bounds. Will McNeil stay. and Williford tangling for the ball there. Looks like it'll be off McNeil, so it'll stay with the Eagles.
And a dangerous pass underneath. Trying to get an easy one under the goal. Deflected out of bounds. We're going to do it again. Try the same play. See if they can do it third time. Nice spin move there by Williford. Just couldn't get the ball to go. Connor Scott back on the defense of Leighton Hensley. I believe that's going to be his fourth foul. We have a technical foul on the floor. That'll be on the bench. Coach Casey Knight with the technical. So it's going to be Leighton Hensley going to shoot the technicals. So he'll probably get him four shots here at the line. So one of two for the technical. I guess those oh, were the foul shots, yes. and we have this is Seth Hill for the technicals. Sinks one of two. And the ball go out of bounds at midcourt due to the technical to the Wildcats. Now, speaking with Bill the other day, we were talking about technical fouls, and he said back in his day, you could, as a coach, or I believe as a player as well, you get three technicals in a game. You're you're allowed three technicals in the game. Wow. So, I, you know, you just wear those referees out all game. <laughs> and also, you only got one, the, the opposing team only got one uh, one foul shot Yes. on the technical. So, I tell you, boy, that, you know, a technical foul, you get – Three in the game, not a whole <laughs> lot of damage has been done, you know. Only three foul shots. So, I tell you, that's come a long way. You get two now. And I think it was probably a little abuse of the rules there that caused the rule to be changed. Sure. Good rebound there by McNeil. He brings the ball up court. Loses the handle, so it'll be a turnover on the Wildcats. And we have an eagle coming into the game. That's Chris Martin. He's in for Cartwright. Ball knocked away out by of bounds Bader. by the Wildcats. Stays with the Eagles. Now at four and four minutes and fifteen seconds left in the third. Bloomfield's still on top. Ball scooped up there by Red Cloud. Out to Rice. Rice with the baseline drive in the left hand. Nice move there by Rice. He's got six in the game. His first two of the half. Rice with the takeaway, can't handle it. Back to the Eagles. And a foul on the floor on the drive. I believe that's gonna be on Seth Hill. And that's it's his, his fourth. fourth foul. So he'll take a seat as uh, Merritt comes back in.
There's a drive there by Mikey Russell, puts it up. He's got four in the game. Nice drive by Mikey Russell. Merritt back up top to Rice, down out to Bader. Caldwell with the spin move. Block there, there by, Connor. by Connor Scott. Scott. And a foul on the drive. Good strong move by Williford. Tried to split the defense. Foul will be on Derek Caldwell. His first. Oh, second. I was one behind. I knew it was going to catch up. Bloomfield in a 2-3 zone. Williford strong. And a jump ball. Ball goes over to the Wildcats. Just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Good move there by Bader. He gets the lay in. Nice drive by Bader. He's got 13 in the game. Quick move there. Steal by Rice and the lay in. It's another two. He's got eight in the game. Garrett Rice having a great, strong defensive game. That goes for the Bloomfield team as well, especially the guards. They've really gotten after these Eagle guards out front, as we're seeing now. And we're going to get a timeout. And let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back. I chose Three Rivers Community College because it's a great place to start. I'm taking the same freshman and sophomore classes as at a university, but at TRCC they cost a lot less and financial aid goes further. I love the individual attention. My teachers are great and classes are convenient. Learn more at www.trcc.edu or call 877-TRY-TRCC. Start here, start now at Three Rivers Community College. Learn more online at trcc.edu. And we're back here, right at two minutes to go in this third quarter. Bloomfield still on top, 63-26, looking to advance on to the championship bracket. Where they'll, uh, if everything plays out as it should, they'll move on to play uh, the championship round. Who, uh, who, do, who's in the uh, the other matchup they'll have? Looks like uh, Bluefield played Kennett. Kennett, so the winner here, which uh, Bluefield should hang on this to move on to play Kennett. And that ought to be a good game. Uh, Bluefield is a very good defensive team, but Kennett plays deep and they run the ball well. Sure, they had a nice showing today against the Puxico Indians. Very competitive. So, whoever, uh, if Bloomfield takes this game on, Rice we'll again a with the steal and the lay in. Nice defense out front once again. And that was, uh, is that Rice? Yes. Okay. Foul there on uh, Matt Merrick. The Andrew Cartwright tried to go around him. Connor Scott with the pull-up jumper there. Nice shot. Yeah, very nice shot by Scott. He's got 12 in the game. And 
And a turnover there by Bloomfield. Not too many of those in this game. Wildcats just got a little careless with the ball there. Turns it over to the Eagles. Well, Dylan Bader sitting there looking at, you know, 6'5", Matt Merrick saying you can't pass the ball too high. <laughs> but yet, just a little bit too high. Sure. Good rebound there by Merrick. Rice will bring the ball up. Up to Bader, down low to Red Cloud. Nice spin move. Ball policed up by Connor Scott. So he'll bring the ball up. Picked by Rice and the lay-in. And Rice has been at it all along. I wish we were keeping up with steals because he have a slew of them, and especially those converting into points for the Wildcats. He's probably in double digits of points off turnovers himself. Turnover, uh, converting on turnovers himself. So he's done a great job. And another steal by the Wildcats. This one by Mitchell Skaggs. Missed a layup there, but an excellent defense by Skaggs. Well, I'd say these Wildcats have been after the Eagles all game long, especially in the backcourt. Just really applying a lot of pressure against these Eagles. Remember to keep those emails coming, folks. We'll be here all night. So send us those emails to sports at yhctv.com. Sports at yhctv.com. We'll put your comments right here on the air. Tell us, tell us what you think of our broadcast, what you think of the tournament so far, and uh, tell us Tell us what you think of your own hometown team. We'll be sure to put your comments on the air. Had quite a few today already from all over. Had from uh, Central uh, Missouri, down in Steele, got it down in uh, Kennett, Portageville. Had it from all over, so keep them coming. We sure appreciate that. Foul there on Dylan Bader is Cartwright. Got a half step on him. Rebound Skaggs. And that brings it into our third quarter between Bloomfield and East Prairie. Bloomfield on top, 67-28. We'll be back with your fourth quarter in just a moment. Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Seek shelter today. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The Dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. And we're back, Eagles have the ball. Three-point shot there by Field LaPlante. We'll have Matt Doris on the line for the Eagles. And don't forget about our show, our new show we've got at YHC, the Sports Roundtable. That's every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Live on YHC, and we replay it at 4 that's every Saturday. It's a great show. Get players, coaches, sports writers just talking about local sports. Had quite a few play players and coaches already in. So tune in every Saturday for the Sports Roundtable. Doris gets the three bound. After he misses the second. Off the foot. Matt Merrick with the ball. Tries to throw it down. 
Dylan Bader with the rebound, the bucket of count. He goes to the line after being fouled. Foul there on Chris Martin, his first for the Eagles. And Dill Bellator gets the and one. Ball knocked away there by number 25, Aaron Tilly. 6'1 senior in for the Bar Bearcats. This time, Merrick with the steal, and he puts it down. Nice jam there by Matt Merrick. Boy, he really got up on that one. And that's a, was that the fifth dunk for the Wildcats in this game? No shot. And the re only reason why we're getting this, you know, reaction from the crowd, you know, the dunks and whatnot is just the defense of Bloomfield is getting these easy opportunities for these jams, and that's where it's coming from, the defense of Bloomfield. Been very impressed with this game. Yeah. There the foul was before the shot, so Wolliford's shot did not count, but his first free, free throw, now he'll shoot the second. In and out. Rebound number 20 there was uh, Dylan Steen. So he gets it down to Merrick. Merrick in the, gets a skag, skag, strong move. And we're just under five minutes. Sprino's going to come back into the game. Bader will take a seat. Clock is running. Any uh, lead in the fourth quarter above 30 points, 30 or more, clock's going to run. So we're at four and a half minutes. <laughs> Foul there on Chris Martin pushing. Nine shooting foul, so the uh, Wildcats will keep the ball, though. Merrick with the rebound and the putback. Merrick thought about a three. Down low to Sperino, can't get it to go. Rebound Skaggs, can't get it to go. And Sperino. All of a sudden, the Wildcats having a hard time putting the ball in the bucket. I guess this is the time to have it in the fourth quarter with a big lead. Yes. <laughs> Foul be on Dylan Steen, his second. We're going to come down here, and Ben Hall is going to go to the line to shoot two. Double bonus. Ball out of bounds off Sperino. We'll stay with the Eagles. Down to two and a half minutes to go in this game. Shot there by Matt Doris. Wouldn't go. Rebound by Ben Hall. Take away there. And a Good push. defense by Aaron Tilly. Pushing foul by Matt Doris. His first. 
Now this game six has been brought to you by New Wave Communications, Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey and Malden, and your shelter insurance agent, Brock Williams in Bloomfield. Appreciate all those folks that helped bring in this year's tournament, especially New Wave Communications. They've done a lot to make this happen with the uh, partnership with New Wave and YHC. We've done a, a lot of work went into making this happen to bring you this Bloomfield Christmas tournament. Down to a minute now left in the game. Good defense by the Wildcats as Eagles are moving the ball around pretty good at the moment. And Bloomfield's just, they've stayed really disciplined in their defense. They haven't overplayed anything to get themselves out of position. As you see there, forced up a tough shot to secure the rebound. That's been the story of the game, especially with these Wildcats. Be Matt Doris on the foul, his third. Aaron Tilly will go to the line. First one's good. This should be about the last shot of the game, I believe, Tyler. We clock down to five seconds. Yeah, we're down five to five seconds. seconds. Better hurry to get it off. Good. He beats the clock. Bringing it in to game six. Bloomfield advances to the championship bracket with a victory over East Prairie. The East Prairie Eagles and its final score 74 to 30. Bloomfield big in this win. They'll advance on to take Kennett, the third seed, in the next round. So a big matchup there to look forward to. And East Prairie will move on to the consolation bracket. And, and they will face play the, off with Puxico. The Puxico Indians, the 14th seed. So we'll look forward to that as well. And stick around. We'll be right back with some stats and discussion. How about that? Does that sound good, discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Right. Yeah, we'll be right back. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or autotrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sandage. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. And welcome to post game of game six. Bloomfield versus East Prairie. Bloomfield victorious. Big 74 to 32. The sixth seed Bloomfield advances on to the championship bracket. And East Prairie moves on to the consolation bracket. Let's get some quick stats in here for the victorious Wildcats. Their leading scorer, that would be. Dylan Bader, 15. Uh, actually, we have uh, Leighton, Leighton Hensley, Hensley with 19. Bad. Leighton Hensley with 19. We have Dylan Bader with 15. Garrett Rice with 12. Jacob McNeil with eight. We have Cody, R Cody Recloud with four, and also Matt Merrick with four, followed up by Aaron Tilly with two, and Mitchell Skaggs with one, and also Seth Hill with one. And for East Prairie, lead man, Connor Scott with 12. 
Mikey Russell with four. Chris Martin with four. Also Dalton Cole Lightly with four. And Ben Hall with two. And Matt Doris with one. Kayla Williford with one. And that wraps up these Prairie scores. So what did you think of the game? Well, it was just a great defensive game. I mean, for the Bear or the Wildcats, I mean, they put up some big numbers offensively, but as you kept saying and reminding us throughout the game, all those points, well, just about all those points started with the defense. Uh, they, they had sure so have. many takeaways, uh, so many uh, created so many turnovers. Uh, they were all fast break points. You know, Leighton Hensley got free on a couple. Matt Merritt got free for a monster dunk there in the late in the game. So uh, just a, a great defensive effort by the Wildcats that created a tremendous offensive result for them. Sure. The, I tell you, you know, the defense started it all for the Wildcats, applied a lot of pressure out front, got easy baskets. That's what led to the five dunks in the game from Leighton Hensley and also Merrick there towards the end. Got this crowd really excited. So they got to feel good about their next game tomorrow, come, or not tomorrow, but Monday coming in. They'll be coming in taking on the Kennedy Indians, the, uh, the three seed. So I tell you, that's that's a game to look forward to. Probably won't have as much success against the guards out front with the Kennedy Indians. Kennedy Indians got some strong guards. But I tell you, it's going to be a great matchup between those two schools. Absolutely. You know, Kennedy plays deep, so they're going to keep fresh legs on the court also. Uh, so that intense defense that Bloomfield showed today is really going to get a workout come Monday afternoon. Yeah, sure will. And uh, the East Prairie Eagles move on to face the 14th seed. Puxico, Puxico Indians. Indians. This should be a competitive game. They, look, they seem like they'll match up fairly well, especially Connor Scott down low. Puxico lacks a little size underneath, so they might be able to take advantage of those opportunities against yes, sir. Puxico. Yes, sir. So that wraps up our game number six between Bloomfield and East Prairie in the first round. It was brought to you by New Wave Communications, Three Rivers Community College, Lincoln Lacey and Malden, and also your shelter insurance agent, Brock Williams out of Bloomfield. We sure appreciate those sponsors of game number six. And hopefully you'll still join us for the rest of games today. We've got uh, three games left on the schedule for you, or two games, two games, two yes. games. We're starting to wind Seven down pretty quick here. It's going by really quick. I tell you, this live, this live stuff goes by pretty quick. <laughs> so it's been a blast so far. Hopefully you'll stick around with us for – our next game, we have the Ken or Ken Hay -tie Hay -tie Indians. Indians. So I tell you, there's so many Indians in this thing. And Bulldogs, and wow. And South Pemmis <laughs> got Bulldogs. Sure, so. and we've got the, the Hay Tie Indians and the uh, South Pemmis got Bulldogs. The 7 10 game is coming up next. Hopefully, you'll join us and keep those emails coming. Sports at yctv.com. Sports at yctv.com. For game number six, I'm Tyler Wagner. And I'm Ed Gargas with New Wave Communications. Thanks again for letting me be here, Tyler. All right, it's been a blast. We'll do it once again, I'm sure. Stick around for the next game. Hopefully you'll enjoy it.